We looked at frequency modulation a little bit at the end of the previous video, so I figured why not set up a really basic FM example here in this modular environment that will be really easy for you to understand. So the idea with frequency modulation is actually very simple. You use sine waves typically as your building blocks, and then you use the output of one frequency to modulate the input of another. So we're talking about pitch modulation that's happening very quickly at an audible level. And what that does is it actually generates sidebands, which we can equate to additional partials, in some cases harmonics. Um, sometimes they're very consonant and they follow the harmonic series. Sometimes they don't. But what's so cool about this environment is that we don't even have to use oscillators to do that. We can use LFOs, assuming that those low frequency oscillators can eventually go into audible frequency oscillators or just a basic oscillator. I thought this would just be a cool thing to show you here really quickly. All right, so we have an LFO. And if we take the output of this LFO, we can run it into our levels here. When we unmute it, you're going to start to see something happening, right? We're following that track and we can put it into the scope as well. All right, we're just going to have to zoom it up a little bit. All right, but as I take the speed, which is controlled right here, I can bring this up fast enough to a point where we start to get this to be audible. Right, we can go up to 100 hertz. So this is now operating more like an oscillator and less like an LFO, because typically an LFO is a control signal, right? It can do something when it's down really slow here, and it could follow that shape if we were to put that onto something. But what's so cool is that we can actually go in, take a second LFO here, and now what I want is to be able to modulate the speed or the frequency. Okay, this frequency is 100 hertz. I want to modulate that with this LFO. And to do that, I'm going to go into, and let's actually change this here. This is going to be our carrier. And carrier is just what generates a sound. And this is going to be our modulator. All right, let's mute this for just a quick second. So I'm going to take the output. I'm going to put it into modulator A. And now this is a really core concept here with um, the reactor blocks is that I can click on this and now this is going to allow me to control different parameters. And the parameter I want to control is right here. It's this frequency, aka it's the pitch. And I might have to bring this back a little bit to make sure that it stays in a range here and that it actually makes sense to work with. I could actually go in here and make this unipolar so that I know where it's coming up to. Okay, so right now we're just gonna hear a pitch bend. And hopefully you can hear that like so. But when I take this up into an audible range, watch how this is going to change the shape and you're gonna hear a new harmonics coming up. All right, we start going faster, faster, faster until it goes so fast that we're now actually generating sidebands. Right, it goes up to an audible range. All right, so that's kind of cool, but it's not really doing anything too drastic. Right, it's changing the shape a little bit, but for the most part, it's still kind of looking like a sine wave. So why don't we try to use something that's faster? And what's something that's going to be faster? Oh yeah, an oscillator, right? So I'm going to go ahead, get rid of this. We can mute this for now. We can obviously turn that off. We're going to bring this back up here to 100. Cool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to bring in an oscillator. Same principle. I'm going to take the output of this guy, which is going to be whatever frequency I set up in it. And let's again go carrier. Let's call this the modulator. And the only reason I'm using the oscillator now is that I can make this go a lot faster, right? I can turn the coarse tuning off and I can really jack this up. So I'm going to again take the output of this. I could use just the sine or I can use the basic output. I'll use the sine wave here to keep it classic. Go into modulation source A. 
start to bring this up. All right. And notice now when we listen, if I slow it down, it's just going to sound like traditional pitch movement. But as I speed this up, output is the LFO, right? And instead of using a sine wave, why don't we use a saw wave to do this? You can see the difference. Or the triangle. So let's use the saw here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, let's take another LFO. If I can find one. There it is. Now I'm going to take the output of this and I'm going to run it into mod A. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to have this one now modulate the pitch. Okay, so you're seeing you're following this track here. We're going to take this. And this one I can set to just go forward motion if I want. And now I'm going to set this one up to again act more like frequency modulation when I bring the speed up. You might be able to find a sweet spot in here somewhere. And this is the joy and fun of working inside of Reactor and setting all these things up. take the output of this into mod B. generating all sorts of interesting and strange sort of sidebands using this LFO to be our carrier. Now, that's not normally what you would do if you were going for FM. And of course, Reactor makes FM very simple for you. Uh, you can just use two oscillators to do this as well, where this is going to be our carrier. And we'll run the output of this into the regular outputs here. And we're going to uh, turn off the coarse tuning. And let's put it in here to something like 220. It's nice that it snaps in like that. And you'll see why this is so useful in a second. We're going to grab another oscillator. And this one is going to be our modulator. Whoop, sorry about that, guys. And now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the output into FM. And the reason for that is I can then control the amount. I don't necessarily have to do that, um, although I kind of do here because what you're going to notice is if I take this off and I put it into pitch, it actually doesn't do anything. For whatever reason, it doesn't work this way. But if you put both of these onto key tracking mode, it will work. So I'm going to actually put this all the way down real quick. So we have more of this classic LFO here, but very soon it's going to turn into FM as I bring this up. You can obviously see. 
see the shape changing as well. And now we're starting to hit FM. And this is where you start to see those side bands come into effect. And occasionally you'll hit on something that will work really well. This is all ratios. Put this to 36. And in theory, because these are multiples of 12, this should work really well, but it's not, so let's try 48. what you'd call kind of like uncontrolled FM. It's frequency modulation, but we have no uh, way to set the depth of the modulation. And that's kind of a really important thing. So in order to do that, I actually will just go and I'm going to turn the key tracking off here. And we're at 220. All right, we'll put this down at the very bottom. We're going to take the output now and instead run it into the FM slide. And then I can take the FM amount and start to bring this up. It's going to start. And because our shape here is a square wave, we're using an LFO here. It's going very slowly. If I bring it up, though. Right? And remember, our hearing range usually starts to kick in around 20. But it's not until you get to 30 or 40 where you're really getting it. And if we want to go more traditional, we'll start with sine wave. And now this start to... Uh, bring the speed up and now we're starting to get our FM and so we set our depth here and we can actually choose different modes so there's a linear even that would be something fun to modulate. I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that. Let's see. So in theory, you should be able to do anything, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to adjust that with a modulator, but let's see if we can. We'll take an LFO. And this is the fun of working with this uh, program right here. I want to be able to adjust this. Ah, it doesn't let us do that. See, we can only adjust the things that are here, but we can adjust the uh, range, obviously, that we'd want going in. So let's try that out. This is pretty cool. And then I might also have it go into modulation A source here to then adjust this frequency. So cool. And so yeah, we're not getting a sound that we'd probably normally work with, but a lot of times this is the joy of working in the modular environment. You can try plugging things in anywhere and sort of seeing the sound that you get. So this was just a very quick FM example just to kind of whet your appetite for what's to come when we work with uh, dedicated FM synthesizers. And actually, I'd argue that this is more fun than what we're probably going to be doing, but you know, to each his own.